Three, two, one. Thunderbirds are go. Hello and welcome to the next Thunderbird 2 video, the last of the pre-recorded videos. Um, yeah, this will be the last one, I think. Uh, I'm getting very confused about the timings of all of these videos. But yes, uh, we are going to be starting on a brand new pod vehicle this time and brand new Thunderbird 2 parts. So um, yeah, let's get started. So as you can tell from all of these parts here, we are starting a brand new pod vehicle this time. It is blue, which is my favorite color. And of course it is the IR3. Again, like the excavator, it's just a one-off pod vehicle that was only used for that one episode. I love Sun Probe. I think it's one of the best episodes of Thunderbirds. And yeah, we're going to start building it now. Now, uh, the first stage is building the chassis for IR3. Did I just call it IR1? I don't know. If I did, sorry. And if I didn't, I'm losing the plot. So sorry again. But yeah, we've already built many, many, many of these chassis. Uh, I think pretty much with every pod vehicle, apart from Fab 1, the radio controlled elevator cars um, and Thunderbird 4. So I've gone ahead and I've built this. It's just the same thing. You snip off the wheels, you pierce them, and then you put the tire on. So that is the chassis of the IR3 all done. So move that to one side for now because you don't need that. And also let's move out everything else out the way apart from where's the first piece that we need. It is this, the main body of IR3. We've got the gorgeous International Rescue logo there. Really nice paintwork on this red and white trim on both sides. Looking very good, very neat of course, like it always is. And uh, the first thing we need to do is attach something in the center there. And the first parts we put on to that front part are these little silver parts here, which are the headlights and the front grille. They are tiny. Um, we, uh, coincidentally, blue and silver was the color scheme for my wedding. Just thought I'd uh, let you all know that in case you didn't know. Um, if you haven't found me talking about the wedding uh, much, even though it was um, a couple of weeks ago by the time you're watching this, I'm actually filming all this before the wedding. There's actually a week to go on my wedding um, at the time of filming this, but I wanted to make sure that I uh, got enough videos uploaded so there wasn't too much of a gap during the wedding and during the honeymoon period and things like that. So aren't I nice? Um, so yeah, so probably when I start filming stuff after the wedding, you'll be hearing more about how the wedding went. And I'll probably throw up a little wedding video for patrons. So if you are interested in that, become a patron. And I'm waffling while I put these headlights and this front grille in. Um, there we go. Oh, all clipped in sort of. Now the instructions do say that you will need to glue all these parts in which you will because they keep popping out quite easily i'm just going to pop them in and then glue them from behind because i found that that is the safest way to do that so it doesn't damage the model as much but this piece is really not wanting to go in at all why is that why aren't you wanting to go in little headlight don't be a pain now Why aren't these pieces going in? That piece is in fine, that piece is in fine. This one, oh, maybe it's because of that little tiny bit of extra sprue stuff there. So now that that's been filed away, I wonder if this piece will go in now. Just shave off those extra millimeters and yes, it does. <laughs> so yeah, just be careful. Make sure you cut off all the sprue parts and then you see them sticking out the back. I'm just gonna attach some glue here to hold them in place. A bit of the Loctite, it was set quite quick. If it comes out, is that out? Yeah, there's glue there. So those uh, headlights and that front grille are in place, looking really nice. The texturing is different to the headlights to the front grille. I really love that attention to detail. That is stunning. Yeah, 
really good start to the pod vehicle, I feel. And the next part is also the front. I just forgot to do it. Um, I should get the way, right way around, and that just pops in there like that. And again, sticks out the back. So just attach a bit of glue onto that there to hold that in place. And yeah, very silvery front to the IR3 there, looking great. Okay, so the next thing you do is on the underside, you see we've got some work to do here. We've got two pegs there. So that part just um, pushes into here. Is this the right part? No, I don't think it is. Sorry, that's my mistake. Um, it's here, sorry, my mistake. We just need to push in this part here, this little lip just clips on there like that. It's not wanting to go on. Let's try again. Maybe I'm putting it on the wrong way around. Yeah, okay, I was. So it just clips in there, that little part, but we do need to attach some glue because it is very loose. It's a bit of glue just on the pegs there and just pop this in again. There we go. That's that part in there like that. Very cool. And then these four holes are for the cockpit. So I'm just going to put some glue just on the edges of those holes there and on the tabs of the cockpit. I'll show you the cockpit when I've done this. I should have shown it before. Sorry. Flip it around. Be careful not to get glue on the glass because it is see-through glass. And there's the cockpit, you see. So it is slightly see-through, the glass. Um, it looks really nice. You've even got the windscreen wiper detailing there. Fantastic. Really good. Little splodge of blue paint just on there, which, oh no, it does come off. So that's gone. Yeah, really nice. Nice front end of IR3. All done, pretty much, which is fantastic. Okay, so this next part is going to be super fiddly because we're attaching... Oops, we're attaching a handrail that goes into that hole there and that hole there. Um, this is the handrail. As you can see, it is tiny. Um, that's for the wrong side. So what you need to do is push it into that hole there. And then also secure it into that hole there. And I don't know which way around to do this. I don't know which one goes in first. So if you push in there, it falls off. That's not helpful. Let's try that again. So if we push the handrail in the back, let's try the back this time. Okay, back is good. Swing it down. Pretty sure that can be pushed in further. I hope so anyway. I really just need to go in further according to the instructions. But before I do that, and before I lose this one, I'm just gonna attach this one. So into the back worked. So into the back first for this one. Ooh, they're so small. And I'm talking really small, so I don't want to break any part of it. I don't think this hole's big enough for this one. Oh, once again, I've got a slight small bit of sprue left over. Because it's so finely molded, I didn't notice it. Actually, that might be why that one isn't running flush either. But let's focus on this one for now. Okay, so that's that in there. Just push this down to that hole. Oh, okay, success. We have success on this one. Now, has this one got a bit of sprue thing? It has ever so small piece, and I'm talking millimeters. And I think it has was affecting how it looked and how it went in. So, 
Yeah, okay. That's better. That's better. Yes, they're in. They're the front handrails all in. Tiny, tiny little detail. But yeah, it looks really, really good. Um, in looking for the front handrails though, this is the sprue. We have rear handrails and mine's gone missing. So um, I might not be attaching the rear handrails because I'd rather have them symmetrical than one on, one off. But um, you never know, I might find it throughout the course of the video. But just to let you know, if I haven't put the rear handrails on, that is why. Okay, the next step is attaching this bulkhead here, which looks really nice. And there is a nice big tab to uh, put glue on, which I like. Come on, the glue comes out. Come on, there we go, All right. So just push the bulkhead into the back there, like that. And you see it's got a little curve over it. It looks really good. Fantastic, liking that. And then we need to get this part here, which has really small detailing. Little vent and that little black box there. Looks awesome. Uh, the vent needs to face the front and the black box will face the back. So um, glue the pegs. Like that. And just push them in there like that starting to take shape now looks very very cool now it's at this stage um we attach the rear um one which will go onto that hole there that hole there and that hole there that hole there but as i don't have the rear one i'm going to leave it for now it is on display so um i can do it at a later date later date if i do find it but it's so small i've probably lost it in complete honesty which is a bit of a pain but there we go um okay so that is the main body of ir3 done for now whoops um and of course we've got the chassis which eventually will go on to like that but that isn't it for ir3 because even though i didn't do one chassis there are other wheelie parts for this pod vehicle and for that you need these little tiny wheels here and these parts here. So um, they make up two sides. Ice cream van? Can you hear that ice cream van? Oh, I'm having ice cream. It's summer everybody nearly, hopefully. If the weather warms up that'll be nice, but yeah, yeah cool. Anyway, got distracted by the ice cream van. Uh, so yes, yeah, so what you need to do is uh, there's pattern parts which are here, these two. Ignore these parts, they will come out and We'll, you, we'll go on to them at a later date. What we need to do is get the bulkier parts, which are these parts here. So the ones with all the holes on one side and the texturing on the other. We need to face them this way and then we need to push these four wheels into these individual hole parts here. Now, the wheels are tiny and actually they've got sprue parts coming off as well. So they might not all fit in perfectly. So this is going to take some time. So I'm going to do this off camera. And when I've done it, I'll be right back with you. Okay, so as you can imagine, that was quite time consuming. Uh, they are very, very small parts, but the wheels do move. You do feel them moving. Uh, you just glue them at this peg there and this peg there. But these four wheels, they do move, okay? Sorry that I couldn't show you on camera, but it was, like I say, a little fiddly. Then what you do is you get a smaller track and you just put the track around like that. And you see the track does move with the wheels. You see that? It all works. I thought that these parts would be stationary. They'll just be parts that you clip on, but nope. They all move. They all move. The wheel moves the track. Very, very cool. Loving that. Uh, now, before we attach the decoration part, we just need to attach the wheels on. So what you do is there's two pegs there and there's two pegs and a hole there. You just push. Ooh, oh no. Okay, that glue isn't fully set on this one. So let's do it on this side. Just push the pegs in 
like that. And then you get a bag of screws with this part. You open it up and you get one of the screws and you just push it in there and you just tighten it down with the screw to hold it in place. So something very different. This very different indeed. Now you need to make sure that you screw it all the way so that it is flush, it is still showing a little bump there. Make sure you screw it all the way so it completely disappears. It is pretty much flush, that only a tight little bump. Because when you put the decoration on, even though it has got a little tiny bump, you want to make sure that um, the decoration fits over like that and fits just fine. And that is that one all done. Now I'll do the same for the next one off camera because it is falling apart because I was a bit eager. Um, and it's you know, like I say, it's all falling apart. Um, but that is the end of the pod vehicle section this time. You just add that front wheel and it is all done. And I will show you next time what it looks like. And hopefully I'll find these rear parts as well. So um, let's take a little break now. No, we won't. Be, well, at least not yet, because uh, guess what I found just on my lap? I found the rear parts there. So let's see if we can attach them. So we've got a tiny little hole just there and a hole in the side. So we need to push this hole now, this little tab bit in here. Sorry, it's not even on camera. This is quite fiddly to do, actually. OK. OK, maybe not that fiddly after all. Not fiddly at all which makes me think that that is either going to come off or I need to push it down further. So I'm going to push it right in. Yeah, there we go. Push that right in. And then we'll do the same for this one. So we find the hole. Push it in the hole. Okay. And that will go straight in there, naturally. And let's just push that really far in and still a little wobbly but i have them i have the rear silver parts there and there oh fantastic that is really wobbly i might have to glue that in but at least i have them which is awesome and while i'm here i've finished off the front tracks as well the tracks still move which is awesome oh actually they're a little stiff but they do move uh this is the way that you need the decorative part you need the circle part facing the front this side and the same this side. And this is the IR3 finish at this stage. Now we will take a break and then look at the next Thunderbird 2 parts. Now we'll take a break and then look at the Thunderbird 2 parts. I've got a little bit of an announcement for you and it's about the Big Chief Studios' Thunderbird figures. They are now in stock, so if you have pre-ordered one of these fantastic figures, then it will be on its way to you after these to break. If you haven't, I recommend going over to the Jerry Anderson official store and just getting your hands on one. We have Scott Tracy, the eldest of the Thunderbird brothers, of course, pilot of Thunderbird 1, and he is fully articulated. He comes with lots of accessories, a display base, and a fantastic collector's box. And of course, we have Virgil Tracy as well, for those of us building the Thunderbird 2. It will look really good stood alongside it. Please note, however, they are not of the same scale. So if you want to get some Thunderbirds memorabilia in your life, make sure you get them while you can. I cannot recommend these figures enough. I have one on its way to me. Thank you very much, Jerry Anderson Store, for sorting that out for me. And I will be reviewing it on this channel as soon as I get it. They're going to be sought after. They're going to be collectible items. So make sure you get them while you can by going over to the Jerry Anderson official store right now and buying one. If you use the link down below, then you help out the channel as well, which would be greatly appreciated. So what are you waiting for? Go over to the Jerry Anderson official store right now and purchase one today. Hello and welcome back. And yep, these are the Thunderbird 2 parts this time. I know, there's no green, uh, there's no plastic, it's just these parts. So what are these parts? These 
parts make up the telescopic legs uh, of Thunderbird 2. So when she rises and releases the pods, you see they've got the gold legs in this clip as I'm showing you now. This is what we're going to start to make right now, which is pretty sweet. So if we zoom in, we look at this spring part, which obviously is springy. What we need to do is need to get to the bottom of the telescopic legs and uh, yeah, which is just this thin part here with this grooved part there. And then we just screw that in to the spring like so, he says. Maybe try the other side. There we go. Oh, no. OK, that's not one to go in. When I tried this just now, it was really easy. There we go. So that screws in there like that. Then what we need to do is we need to get to this thin part here, this thin piece of plastic. I guess this helps the spring keep its shape because, you know, it could be bent out of shape and stuff like that. But this is a solid piece of plastic. See, it's not hollow. It's solid and it moves as well. But you just push this into the top of the spring there. Push it all the way uh, oh, actually, is it all the way down? Yes, it even says on the instructions all the way. So yeah, you don't need a bit sticking at the end. Push it all the way and that is that done. Then you need to get this part, which is the slightly thicker part. And believe it or not, we just put it under there like that. So you see when it's all done, they will all fold one. And then as it goes out, it will slowly go up like that. And you do that for all four of the legs. Uh, yeah, they're metal pieces, um, which are great. I thought they'd be plastic, but no, they're metal and they've got this gorgeous coppery colour to them. And uh, I imagine that the next, well, video at least, is just going to be more of these parts to put onto these legs. So I hope you'll join me for that. And we will also, uh, in the next video, be finishing off the IR3. So I hope you'll be doing for that. Let's make a nice little pretty end picture here. Beautiful. Look at that. It, it looks great. I'm mucking about. I don't know why. Uh, I think I'm ready for a break. So I will see you guys next week for more Thunderbird 2 parts. Until then, guys, take care. FAB. Bye-bye. I just want to thank my patrons John Medney, Jay Fauschenbauer, Tom Butcher, Jerry Wilson, Omar Khan, Gary Lewis, Simon Edwards, John Dunseith, Glenn Philo, Andrew Woods, Fabio Gugel, Simon Dunn, Brick Bardo, Thomas Parker, David Cunningham, Mark Frampton, Louis Pays, Terry Schwanditz, Donovan as with Jaja, James Brown Jr., The Mitsotonic University Podcast, Dave Westbury, Michael Chambers, Marcus Simon, Vince Steele, Seven Yen Barrett, and Flash. Without you guys, this video would not have been possible and this channel would be dead, so thank you very much.